Hi everyone, just while we're waiting for a few more people to join, I've got a short social poll um, and we just, just a couple of questions for Heather and I to understand um, how you're using social media. Um, so just while we wait, I'll just launch it now um, and just take a minute or two to uh, cast your vote um, and be really interesting to uh, see how you guys are all using social media and I'll give out the results as we progress through the, through the webinar. Okay, well, I think we'll, um, we'll kick off. Welcome everyone, my name is Charles Clark. I'm really delighted to have Heather Smith here with me today. Um, I think you all probably are very um, aware of Heather and what she does, um, so don't really need to introduce her any further but other than to say um, welcome and thanks for joining us, Heather. Thank you very much for um, inviting me on, on, Charles. Really appreciate it and thank you to everyone who's shown up to listen to the webinar. Fantastic. So this is a, um, the second time that we've done social media. Um, and the reason that we're um, launching into it again um, is that just all of the people that we've spoken to um, since we did the last webinar said that social media for them is really, it's one of the two, their two top priorities is, you know, how, the, how should they be using it? How, um, you know, how and what should they be doing to, uh, I suppose, benefit their business? So um, that's why uh, we're doing another one. We did one about seven months ago and had a fantastic response. So I'm thrilled to see so many of you um, are interested to hear, to hear what we've got to say again. Um, so as the slide says, you know, why should I be using it? And Heather, you had a really good a response when we were talking about this yesterday, which is basically, why should I be using it? Because that's where your clients are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think the ratings are there's like 4 billion people currently using social media. And, and of course, you need to look at your client categories, but if they're on social media and you can reach them that way, and if that's your goals, then that's something that you need to consider as part of your uh, marketing mix. Exactly. And uh, so while there are many, many social media networks that we put out, um, TikTok, Reddit, Pinterest, um, Google My Business, um, what we're going to concentrate on today is just the main four. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. And we know you guys are pressed for time and, and both in this terms of this webinar, but also in terms of your business lives and, and personal lives. So we'll concentrate on the main four and give you hopefully a really good um, sort of overview of how you can be using them and, um, and what you should be doing on each, on each one of them. So before we get into that, um, Heather gave me this, uh, this image, which I, I really love because Dolly Parton, I think, in one image really um, sort of nailed the differences between all the different social channels. And um, Heather, as you were saying, also the right image really on social media makes all the difference. Yeah, absolutely. I spend a lot of time uh, framing up an image. Um, and uh, I personally use a Google Pixel phone to just get that really um, nice image. And that can um, um, really have impact on the number of people who view it um, and, and the number of shares you'll get. And I really like... Um, uh, what Dolly has done here in terms of she's shared it on Twitter. So pretty much anything can go on Twitter. It's a conversation, but she's showing you the tone and the vibe and the voice of the different uh, mediums um, and, and, and what you can expect there. Um, for example, Instagram, use your filters. You can use your gray and white filters. You can use your red zone filters. Use your different filters to, to have fun with your images. Exactly, and also um, as she, I'm not sure what movie that her LinkedIn uh, photo was from, but I think it really clearly illustrates the differences in terms of, as, as Heather said, tone and probably content and what people are expecting on those different platforms. So LinkedIn's quite professional, um, and if you look at Facebook um, and Instagram and Twitter, they're obviously very different uh, sides to, to Dolly. So, you know, Facebook's a bit more friendly, a bit more casual, um, Instagram is obviously a place that you can really let your hair down, have a bit more fun. Um, Tinder I've never been on, but I think you get the idea with the, uh, with the photo that she's, that she's put there. Um, and obviously we're going to be covering Twitter as well, which is a, a really fantastic place for people to, um, to be engaging. Yes. I think the LinkedIn profile would have come from uh, her movie 9 to 5 with Jane Fonda. Uh, 9 to 5. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> fantastic. So. Lily yeah. Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. Yes, it was, yes. So 
kicking off the Facebook. So um, we started this first because it is really, it's the biggest network out there, over two and a half billion monthly users. So really after your website, think of Facebook as sort of your, the second most effective shot window for your business. Um, uh, but it also is a great place to um, engage with, with friends and networks. So whether they're your personal friends or clients or people that you'd like to um, maybe have on board in the future as clients, um, most people are on here. So a really good place for you to start. And um, as we'll be talking about later, it's also one of the, the best platforms for groups. Yeah. I, Charles makes a really good point that after your website comes Facebook don't run the risk of relying on platforms that you don't own and building up um, huge followings and putting in lots of effort on platforms that you don't own. Make sure you have ma the majority of that happening on your website. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. And all of these social channels, um, they are really there to help amplify what you already have on your website. So if you've got blogs on your website, um, videos, things like that, that's fantastic. These just give you another another channel, another opportunity to get those messages out there. And ideally, if someone clicks on them and engages with it, then they know that the you know the place to go then to read more or learn more would be your website. Really, is always the um, your key uh, your key asset. Um, so when it comes to Facebook, um, don't overlook small things. And this really goes for all of the channels. But you know we have a lot of real estate in Facebook. Uh, both in terms of the brand um, section, which you can see for Kinder, Kinder Pocock is on the left, but then you've got this enormous uh, sort of rectangular section and, you know, they're using it to really do a couple of things. They talk about a refreshing change. So they're starting to put across what it is that their brand stands for, how they, how they like to do business. And you can also see there a couple of the awards and um, I suppose partnership badges that they have. So just a really effective way to start to showcase um, your expertise, who you are as a company, and then also how to think about, um, you know, how to do more than just use it as a brand spot, but you can do lots of things. You could use it to promote a, um, a video uh, that you could link through from here. You could even have, uh, if you've got, say, a piece of insight, a piece of text insight or um, something related to some policy changes, you can always link to it from, um, from the bios. So an interesting spot that some people, um, I think, maybe don't pay close enough attention to. Mm. And, and as you're suggesting, you can actually go through and update it as you've got new things coming through. And I will mention, this is uh, Sharon Pocock's um, uh, Facebook page, and she uses that purple heart in all of her branding. So even when she types a message to you, it, it, she uses the purple heart as her punctuation marks. So it's a consistent branding theme through everything. Just a very, very simple purple, purple heart, which is lovely. Mm. No, no, and I think that's um, definitely one of the messages that we'll be giving you today is, you know, although all these channels have their own unique um, ways for people to sort of to communicate and, and connect, but definitely cons brand consistency is really important. So if someone sees you on Facebook and visits you on Twitter or LinkedIn, um, especially your business pages, they're going to see the same colors, uh, the same logos, all those sorts of things to really, I suppose, as, as Heather said, drive home that consistent image. Um, and all, it's also a great spot to, um, to tell people more about your business. And, and Facebook really does do this really well. You can see here for Kinder Pocock, they've got all the information that um, you could want. You know, opening hours, um, the website address, about the story, um, and even contact um, the team members. So it's a really nice place where you can start to tell the story about um, you, you know, yourself or your company, uh, what you stand for, some of your values. Um, so I really recommend um, making sure that you do do, do this on Facebook um, because people do read it and, and oftentimes in websites, you know, people have an about page, um, but that may be one or two clicks in, whereas on Facebook, it's right there sort of front and center and it's really easy for um, a viewer to, to find out more about you before maybe they take that next step of, of going to your website. Yeah. And, and I would mention here that in her contact details, I might consider having something like hello at kinderpocock.co.uk, like a, a general email address rather than um, the, person, the person's name. But that just depends on your boundaries and, and uh, how you're dealing with things there. Hmm. 
Now it's um, just first of the poll results. So what social channels are you guys using? So 93% of you are using Facebook. That was by far and away uh, the most popular. Um, LinkedIn came in second at 73%. Uh, Instagram, I was surprised at how high it was, 43%. And then lastly, Twitter on 21%. Um, and there weren't any others uh, that you guys mentioned. So those, as we thought, those are the sort of the key ones that you guys are using. And, um, and I'm glad to see that you guys are concentrating on Facebook and LinkedIn. If you have to sort of only use one or two, those are definitely the two that I would recommend. What do you think, Heather? How would you split it if you only had a limited time? I would identify and try and work out where our actual client base is. Um, if your client base is sitting on Insta, then move to Instagram. If your client base are professionals and sitting on LinkedIn, then move to LinkedIn um, and focus your time there. Um, and don't feel the need to be on all four places at the same time. Just focus where they are and, and focus on where you're going to get the results. Yeah, and I think um, alongside that, um, in terms of hours in a day, there's only so many hours in a day that you probably uh, are able to put towards social media. So um, just put them where you're going to get the most ROI. And um, as you said, it says, if your clients are on, on Instagram or, or LinkedIn, um, be where they are. So LinkedIn um, follows nicely after Facebook. Uh, not only is it the um, second most popular one that you guys are using, but it's also, I, I think, definitely um, probably the, the platform that most everyone would have had some personal experience with. Um, from a resume perspective, um, you know, whether it's your sort of job seeking or sort of a place for you to go and get um, sort of upskilled or sort of find out um, what's happening in your industry. Um, so it's no surprise that it's also a really popular place to connect with um, with clients as well. Um, it's, it's about 570 million users, so it's also pretty large. Um, obviously, compared to, to Facebook, not as large, but then obviously this is um, focused on, on those professionals. Um, so here we're using um, Kelly Shard at GrowthMD. And I think what she does really well here, um, one is that she's consistent um, her personal and her um, uh, business page, um, but also she has uh, she uses it to great effect to really showcase um, her expertise. Um, and you know she she's very good at um, making sure that she has her skills, her her endor uh, endorsements, um, all those things in here. So it's a place where if someone is maybe doing a bit of research into you before they start working with you, um, they can go on here and, and just get a feel for you in terms of your professional capabilities and, and also your business capabilities as well. Um, and Heather, I know you, you use LinkedIn a huge amount. How do you find, you know, is the best way that you get the most responses? Um, look, yeah, and I, I, this is um, from Kelly Shard's page. And I think that that is, it's an excellent page highlighting she's got her professional qualifications right up on the front there. And she does these amazing videos that are really, um, um, easy to watch and approachable and engaging. Um, so one of the things I will do is um, when I'm sharing something on LinkedIn, I typically want to be sharing information and I typically want there to be three learnings from it. So for example, if I'm reading a book, say I'm reading a book, um, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, I will, as I'm reading it, note down three things that I'll then later share on LinkedIn. This is what I learned from it. And part of that is engaging. I'm starting a conversation with people, potentially um, that can circle back to what we're doing at work. Um, and it, it's about um, when people buy from you after sort of seven warm touches, and it's just another additional warm touch. But Kelly does a really great job of, um, here she is, video up, really approachable, it's fun, easy to watch video but it's on payroll tax. Like it's totally contrasting. Um, and if you're in, if you were a, uh, someone looking for an accountant in the medical who specializes in medical, after watching a few of these, you would feel like you actually know her. You understand the way she talks, you understand her um, voice and, and you're more likely to engage with her. No, I think it's true. And, and what I like about these videos is, I suspect they've done, uh, you know, probably from either her laptop um, or maybe she's just got a sort of an iPhone on a, on a stand. Um, and so they're, they're not particularly um, super high sort of production values, but they don't need to be because they're authentic. Um, she can knock them out quickly. 
she doesn't have to spend a huge amount of time or money sort of investing in them. Um, and, and there's something that she can do in her spare time rather than necessarily um, making sort of a production with it and sort of getting multiple people involved. So I suppose it enables her to, as you were saying, Heather, um, she's got a high cadence of these. You know, if you look on her page, mm. um, they're coming out all the time. And so making, making it easy is, is one of the key things when it comes to social media. There's no point only doing social posts if they take you hours and hours to write or you've got sort of a, a huge um, sort of research paper that you're willing to sort of talk about. You know, you can comment on things that you saw or you read, as you, as you said, Heather, things in the news, or if, you've, if you had an idea or have an insight. Um, as Kelly had done, you can just jump on, um, make a video and put it out there and people really engage with this sort of stuff. It's not like sort of 10 years ago where people thought they really needed the high production values. These days with the likes of, um, you know, TikTok, um, these sorts of, I suppose, authentic and real videos uh, are, you know, are just as good, if not more effective than the sort of the high production value ones. Yeah, absolutely. And look, that would be based on, she would have a, a mobile phone device and probably a tripod. So while it actually doesn't technically cost very much money, I think the, the, the quality um, of the finishing is important. So make sure it's quiet around you when you're actually recording this. Make sure um, um, the background looks reasonably respectable. Um, you don't want to have wind blowing around while you're doing it. So you don't want it to turn into the Blair Witch Project unless <laughs> <laughs> that's your audience. <laughs> yeah. And the nice thing is, um, on, say on your iPhone, um, the ability to edit these down is pretty easy. So even if you have a few missteps, uh, it's really simple just to sort of to edit those out. Um, and it's something that, you know, you can go on YouTube and, and see um, instructions on how to do it in just a few minutes. Absolutely. Great, so just a second poll result. So how often do you post to social media? It looks like the majority of you are somewhere within the sort of once a week to sort of two or three times a week. Um, there is a sort of a, a secondary group, which is sort of a couple of times a month, um, but it seems like most of you are fairly active, which is, um, which is great to see. So I always liken Twitter sort of to, to a noisy bar. There's a lot of opinions out there, it's, it's noisy. Um, you can have a lot of fun. Um, there also might be sort of opinions that you agree with or disagree with, um, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of gold in there, and you can really get some fantastic insights if you follow the right people. And I think Heather, you've used it to great effect with your business. Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, um, the sort of the story behind me is, I was putting out insights as I was writing. I was I I, I actually because I write a lot of books, I was crafting sentences on Twitter. And I was doing that um, and it ended up that Rod Drury approached me over Twitter to write Zero for Dummies, which has turned into the For Dummies um, best-selling um, book here in Australia. So, and that all came off Twitter. Um, and I wasn't tagging him. He saw what I was writing out there. Um, so, so it has been very effective for me. But of course, your clients will see you there as well. Yeah. And so you can use it and, you know, in a number of different ways. You can both... Um, follow people that you're interested in. So, I mean, we obviously follow Heather. I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well. Um, but equally, there might be someone in else in the industry that you think has a really good take on things, or it might be that you follow um, industry groups or sort of news channels. So, if you want the sort of the latest updates on what's happening in your in your sort of in your region or um, in your sort of area, you know, it's a really easy way to sort of get, I suppose, a distillation of of that day's news. Um, and in quite a digestible format. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the reason we chose, and uh, you're going to have to say the name, Heather, because I... Lillette. Um, Lillette Kalisha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the lovely Lillette Kalisha, and she, um, she's very good all across social media, but this is her Twitter page. And what's great about this is that she has linked to the other um, handles, you call them handles, of the other uh, associations that she is associated with, such as the business that she founded, which is All That Counts, um, Account Tech Global, which is, uh, which is another organisation that she founded, um, the Association of Accounting Technicians Australia, AAT Australia, and the director of the Sydney Hills Chamber. So she's really highlighting all the things that she has done um, and, and that she's a, a, a small to medium enterprise advisor. 
quick link through to her website um, and uh, sort of a really strong, strong presence there. Mm. And I think, um, and again, both just in terms of the images, I mean, both very nice images. Um, she's obviously had, I think, a, a portrait um, photo yes. taken. Yeah, she has had professional photos taken and yeah. that's something to consider. Um, I would highly recommend um, accountants and bookkeepers consider that. And if they feel it's out of their price range, find an account, find a photographer who needs assistance with accounting or bookkeeping and do a contra deal. <laughs> yeah, it's just, again, it's just a small thing, but uh, given, you know, she's very highly, um, I suppose, involved in the community and, you know, had she had sort of a, a sort of a, a too dark or hard to see image, it just would sort of throw throw it off. And and I think you know when you have such a a, a great bio to sort of to not match with an equally good um uh, an equally strong image um would would mm. be a pity. But so I'm you know thrilled that she um has such yeah, a strong and one. it's approachable and it's engaging and it's happy and you feel like she's the person you actually want to talk with. You want to so, sort of meet with. Exactly. And look, and that's how a lot of people, a lot of clients use social media. So they may not have met you, but as, um, as Heather said, you know, they might then come across you on social media and then they'll start to see you a bit more and engage with you. And it's all about building up over time that, that connection, that relationship, so that then say you, um, you bump into them at an event or you um, maybe email them or you sort of um, have a phone conversation with them. They actually have a bit of a sense of who you are and what you stand for rather than just be, being sort of cold off the bat. Um, much better if you've been able to use uh, these channels to, I suppose, do a little bit of that legwork for you. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so with, with Twitter, you know, because it is so fast paced, um, you can interact with it in a way that you maybe wouldn't on, say, especially LinkedIn. So with Twitter, you know, you can post the same post multiple times um, you know you could post it in the morning in the evening and then a couple of days later you could post it again and probably you're going to get new audiences every time because you know people's feeds are pretty busy and so in a, in a way you know it's almost um, a good idea to do it especially if it's a really great piece of content because seeing people on the first time or two. and that's obviously different to LinkedIn LinkedIn you know you sort of post something once and then because of the, I suppose, the cadence of LinkedIn, you wouldn't sort of keep on posting it because um, that's kind of not how the sort of, I suppose, the cadence of LinkedIn is. But, you know, Twitter, feel free to, um, to sort of keep on uh, hammering away at those key messages. Um, and also retweeting and reposting other people's tweets as well. So in, in this case, let's uh, retweeted something which is um, put out by the government. Um, and so she just thinks it would be really useful for her audience to see it. Um, so she can just quickly hit the retweet, um, doesn't take her any time to do it. So a really efficient way to disseminate information to your followers. Um, yeah, and just sort of, so there's lots of ways you can do it. I mean, Heather, you, you use it a huge amount. How do you balance sort of your own content versus sort of retweeting and reposting other people's? I want value to go to people who are following me. Um, so if something of value comes along, um, I will uh, share it and know that it'll be there and people might troll through and have a look at it um, while putting my own content out there, but also having a conversation. I do see it as an opportunity to have a, a, a around the water cooler conversation with people um, and, and uh, discuss particular things. Um, but I do think what Lillette's done here in terms of uh, sharing um, the National Retail Association uh, retweets, that's a great way to start. Go and just follow sort of five organisations that uh, are relevant to your client base and, and just share that content with them. That Again, you could probably do that in 10 seconds um, and, and keep your feed going, but it's actually relevant for your clients and they know what, what, uh, where you're, you're headed, where your focus is. Um, and, and the second one on the higher purchase, you can see she has it linked into um, LinkedIn. So she actually is taking you um, from Twitter into LinkedIn to read more about higher purchase. Um, she's used the hashtag and she's used an emoji. I encourage the use of emojis. It's a downward arrow emoji, so it's not the most exciting emoji, um, but like uh, Sharon Pocock using the, the purple heart, I think it brings, um, it's eye-catching. 
So mm. if there's a lot of things happening and if you could, are able to put in some emojis, um, it just makes it a bit more eye-catching for people to stop and, and, and listen and stop and read and stop and absorb what your message that you're sending out. Mm. So changing tack a little bit to, to Instagram and if um, Twitter is a sort of super fast-paced uh, place for commentary and insights and and sort of people chatting and Instagram has a bit of a different feeling. And, and while it's sort of one of the more recent uh, social networks, it's also, you know, it's hugely popular. So there's over a billion users and amongst um, the younger um, audiences, so sort of millennials, Gen Y, sort of anyone probably under 40, maybe even under 50, it's, it's pretty popular. And a lot of brands and businesses are using it to uh, tell the story about um, what it is that they're doing. And they use a lot of video and a lot of imagery to do it. Um, but don't worry, it doesn't all have to be serious. In fact, probably best if it's not too serious. You know, there are places like LinkedIn for sort of the super serious um, elements. You know, have some fun on Instagram. It's a place where you can let your hair down a bit. Um, I suppose show your followers a little bit of, of your personality. You know, it's, you know, all work and no play um, is never too good for anyone. So it's really a, a place where you can, um, I suppose, behind the scenes a little bit and bring that personality forward. Yeah, absolutely. And this is uh, Michelle Grisdale's um, from Rainforest Bookkeeping. Her, she's got two Kelpies um, and she's always putting up photos of them and they're adorable. And that's part of work-life balance is uh, having Kelpies and having dogs and having pets around. Exactly. So if you're sort of wondering, you know, is it, is it all just sort of um, fun photos? It's like, well, yes, you know, there's a, there's a nice balance to be struck. So. Um, she was nominated for Woman in Accounting, um, and so she's put that, um, that logo up, which is fantastic, and that equally goes alongside some family photos that she might be having um, as well, because um, she uses it for both her personal and her, um, and her professional business as well. Yeah. Um, I think one thing just to, and this is a bit of a, a tip, is that um, although you can't share links in Instagram, so you can't have a link in one of the posts, uh, what you can do is have a link in your bio. So um, at the moment here, she's got a nice message, which is very much, uh, I suppose, around um, her value prop. And then she's got a link to her web page. Basically, that uh, maybe she's hosting, and that, that link could be to a sign-up form, um, or it could be to a webinar that she's hosting, or it could be to, to download something of interest or to go to another, maybe just to her LinkedIn profile. So really, that's, that's a great opportunity that I think um, more people should take advantage of um, because it's, it's just a nice way that if people are going to your, to your page um, or to, to your post that you can take advantage of. And, um, and if you want to tell people about it in a particular post, um, you could just use the phrase link in bio. And most people understand that that means that the link for whatever you've been talking about, say if it's an event, um, if they click back to your, to your bio page, uh, they can click on that link and learn out and learn more. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So um, um, Michelle does a really great uh, job with her Insta page. I think it's really important for Insta to be visually stunning. So really focus on um, on on the visuals that you're getting here. Now Michelle's audience is um, tradies, and so um, she actually posts. As a natural part of her life, a lot of photos of her on the boat, a lot of photos of the family fishing, um, which I imagine is something that easily resonates with the tradies in that, oh, I can, this is someone who I want as one of the team members assisting me. Um, I can see what they're, they're doing there. One of the things I would say, and not that it's applicable into this situation, but I would think twice about putting up um, photos of your children and their, your children's faces publicly. Um, that's something that I personally don't do. Um, so I would suggest that if you are thinking about it, consider if that's really something, uh, an avenue that you want to go down. You can put up photos perhaps of their back playing um, um, soccer, but whether you want to be visually sharing them, their faces. Not that this, because the one that she's done here is, he's, he's obviously a grown adult, so I'm not necessarily referencing that. He's, it, it's a sort of a different situation, but I do worry about children going up constantly mm. and i think and i think that probably applies to all the all the different networks as well heather mm. yeah. yeah 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 um so just we had we did have one question early on um but it was just about to do with the poll so guys if you have any questions for heather or i 
please do um, put them in the chat box and we'll answer them as we go. Um, and just as we continue on um, to how I get started, um, in terms of running social ads, 46% of you said you hadn't, 35% uh, had, and then 19% uh, said that you were thinking about it. So really interesting to see that actually quite a, quite a large proportion of you were either thinking about it or had already run an ad. And um, I think that's one thing which we, we're not really touching on today because it's, it's probably another level of um, sort of, uh, we could do another webinar, webinar on it, but running ads on social media is definitely something that I would strongly recommend um, once you've sort of got the basics um, underway. So how do I get started? And I know, um, you know, we've taken you through the four networks pretty quickly, and you might be thinking, oh, that, that all sounds great, but what, what is my jumping off point? And I, I suppose um, Heather and I were talking about it yesterday, and my advice, and, and Heather, obviously love to hear your opinion, would be you're probably on one or two of these already, so you might already be on LinkedIn and Facebook, um, maybe on a, on a personal capacity. So that's a good place to start. So you might like to start by following or observing um, people that you respect or, or that you think do a good job and see how they do it. And you can sort of see the sorts of posts that they're putting up, the language, the tone they use. And once you've sort of got a little bit of that confidence, um, start doing it yourself. And so whether that's from your personal pages um, or your business page, and if you don't have one, I'd really recommend getting a business page. Um, you could just start with a couple of posts and just start to get the feel for it. Um, you know, they don't have to be earth shattering. You know, the first one, if you haven't done any before, might be great. I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn, um, you know, excited to be here and, and, you know, joining in the conversation. You know, they, they don't have to be um, sort of uh, the most insightful, specific earth shattering ones. It's just about being, being present and, and having fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I always like to share coming from a training background. So I come from a very strong training background. I always like to share something educational, entertainingly educational. So that's what, if I've heard something, if I've seen something, if I think it will help a client out there, if I, um, if I've received a question from a client and I respond to it, as I craft my response to it, I might cut and paste it, put it in a word doc and shape it up and then put it out on Twitter or on LinkedIn, question, answer, um, and, and, and share something that way. So I, I get um, sort of the best bang for my time in terms of I'm responding to a paying client, but I can generically share it with the audience as well. Mm. So while it's all great getting started, what we definitely um, don't recommend is sort of going off uh, sort of half cocked and saying, okay, well, I'm going to do this and this and this, and I'm going to just sort of be on all, all channels trying to sort of achieve all these things. Um, like with everything, have some smart goals. So what is it that you actually want um, from social? And it could, be, it could be a couple of things. And we've just put some ideas down here on the side. You obviously might have some specific ones. Um, but the one that really, uh, I suppose, made me sit up and think yesterday, which I hadn't, I'd always sort of thought about more sort of quantitative things like, fans and followers and reviews of business and sort of uh, clicks and, and site traffic. And Heather just said, look, one of the big reasons that she finds um, social so good is connecting with her community. And I thought actually that probably for many people is, is the first thing, you know, that's the point of social, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, it's, yeah. Like, it's like it, all different forms or all different types of cafes <laughs> that you're jumping into. Exactly. So um, I think also one, one thing just to be aware of is fans and followers, um, just be aware that having lots of them is obviously great, but they are a bit of a vanity metric and people will often say, oh, look how many fans I have. And so this must be fantastic. If they're not the right types of people following you, then they're actually not worth anything. And I, Heather had a great anecdote about sort of making sure that you had the right fans with I think a guy who had OCD you were saying he was sort of hammering home things but very much a tire kicker you know you knew that you weren't going to get any business out of him. Um, yeah, absolutely um, I was uh, someone contacted me and asked me lots of questions which were all available on Google were all not services I necessarily provided um, and just kept following up with me but it 
it, it wasn't of a, a good use of my time to keep responding to his questions because they were not a topic I was an expert on, but for some reason he had decided I was an expert on the topic. So it's very important to, to, to um, it's quality over quantity. And if you get four people who like a post who are actually genuine uh, people who you potentially want to either be um, part of your business team or part of um, your potential client, then that's far more valuable than 400 people who um, are, aren't really interested are just sort of fly by the night people. So really go for that quality um, over, over quantity. Yeah. And I think um, you'll be able to, I suppose, get a bit of an idea because you'll see um, it'll be probably hopefully similar people will be clicking on them. Um, and hopefully they'll be, they'll be engaging, they'll be asking questions, they'll be commenting, they might be sharing uh, with people, you know, because they find it valuable. So they'll be sharing with people um, within their network. So yeah, just don't, um, don't panic if you've got low engagement numbers. As Heather said, it's making sure that you're engaging, engaging with the right people. Um, and I think a really important point to make is that we know that you guys are incredibly busy. Um, businesses to run, families to, um, to see. So what we don't want to do is sort of scare you into thinking that this has to take a lot of time. Um, it, it, it really doesn't. You know, if, if you take a few minutes a day and, you know, regularly or maybe just, a, you know, 10, 15 minutes a week, you can actually be quite active um, on social media and it doesn't have to take up a huge amount of, you know, non-billable time as it were. Mm, absolutely. And it can, it can if, you, if you have it set up on your mobile device, it can be that time um, when you're waiting in a shopping queue or you're waiting in a doctor's office or you're on the bus to go somewhere or you're in the back of an Uber. Um, honestly, I have <laughs> I've edited a video um, in the back of an Uber, uploaded it to LinkedIn and, and uh, had a massive reaction from it. So you, you can do some of this stuff on the go. It, it's doesn't necessarily, it's just, it's about having a conversation with people and just sharing it as you can. Exactly. A um, couple of things to mention. When we talk about posting consistently, we're not saying that you sort of have to be posting five times a day. You know, consistently is whatever you're able to do in a real So once a day, that's fantastic. A day, that's great. You know, the main thing is to just sort of have a bit of a regular cadence, one that you know that you can maintain over time. And I think one of the um, things to think about is that if you're a follower and um, or sort of someone who's interested in, in following you and you go to someone's social media page and you see that the last post was sort of November 2017, why would you follow that person? Because they're, they're clearly not going to be posting anything that's kind of relevant or Avengers because they're, they're not posting. So think about obviously what you need to achieve, but also your followers, you know, keep them engaged and, and you keep them engaged by obviously having the right sorts of topics and, and posts, but also you have to show them some love. So if you only sort of post once every six months, um, they're probably not going to be very engaged with what you're doing. But if you're a bit more regular, they'll expect to see those posts from you. They'll be excited when they see them because they always know that you're, you're posting things that are of interest to them. Um, and a really easy thing to do is if you do have a post that performs well, so say it gets quite a few views, if it's a video or, or likes or shares, you can always go in and boost it. So you could do it in um, Facebook or Instagram. You could just say, look, I'm gonna put um, five or $10 behind it um, and boost it. And then you could sort of, you know, just try and get that, um, get that sort of increased engagement, maybe help it go a little bit more viral than it necessarily would have um, if it was just purely organic. So networks, I think Heather, you're the sort of network extraordinaire. Um, what, what's your view on how to use social media sort of for growing your own network and building those networks and, and why is it important to do? I'm a naturally curious person, um, so I'm always interested in meeting people, finding out what they're doing. Um, and so building the networks while um, um, understanding what someone's actually doing, I can kind of go, oh, that person may be able to help this person and try and connect them in that particular way. Um, so that's kind of where I focus um, on doing and I'm potentially helping them. And sometimes it helps me, but sometimes it helps other people. 
um, and, and going through um, and, and focusing on the areas that are particular interest to me. So I'm really interested in accounting apps. So I'll go off and focus if there's a um, new accounting apps are launched, um, I'll go and follow um, the particular areas over there and maybe connect with them to find out a bit more what, what they're doing. Um, but it will depend on um, sort of the particular areas that you're in. So for instance, um, if you are an accountant and you're focused on retail, you might want to build um, connections into um, people who are working in retail, be it maybe um, um, a, a group, a retail group, to find out what they're doing and what they're thinking and what their concerns are. Is it new payroll legislation laws? And, and if it is, is there something that you can create content on about that? Hmm. So when we were talking about this the other day and I was sort of coming from a pure marketing background, which was very much like uh, make sure that you've sort of dotted all the I's and crossed the T's of, of making sure that you have your social icons in your website and on, on your email footers and things like that. And I think you made the really good point, which is the best sort of um, performance for you is that if someone types in your name and accounting or your name with AU on the end of it, um, all your posts are going to come up. And I thought, yeah, actually, that does, that does make the difference. You know, you want to be findable on the social networks, just like you want to be findable if someone uh, types in your business name on Google. And Heather, how, how do you sort of go about making sure that you've got that sort of visibility? So I have a very common name, Heather Smith, like there's 80,000 of us out there. So what I did was I added um, capital AU, which is Australia to the end. So all of my social media tags are typically Heather Smith AU. So I'm very easy to find that way. So if you went Heather Smith AU or Heather Smith um, accountant, you would find me. Um, and I do find some people just seem to, they decide that their name is gonna be sort of some weird thing that they do or some mashup of what they're working in. Um, and they might just be easier just to actually give their own personal name in their own personal space. So I used to, I used to have a handle which was the MYOB trainer, um, which was great and that's what I did. Um, but then if I evolved and moved into other areas, that handle, that name um, is now long, no longer relevant for me. So I actually hung my hat on something that I grew out of. Um, and that's why I think in a lot of these cases, put your name there. And if it's a business name, put a business name out there, but remember that that business name um, and everything that you're doing there is part of the business framework. Mm. And um, we've just got a couple of questions. One from Sarah, which is, how do you find out what social media is the preferred platform for your client base? I think Heather, you touched on it before, which is, um, if you already have a few clients or you know a few people in that area, ask them where they are, you know, what social media channels are they using? Uh, would you agree? Is that sort of the yeah, easy I way? Would do, like say, um, say if your client base is um, uh, veterinarians, I would actually um, contact the vet association um, and ask them if they've done any research on it, because I'm sure they'll be able to share what, what, um, uh, where they are and, and where they feel because they will have they will know themselves they'll have done some research on that so I know for instance there's 14,000 vet practices here in Australia currently um, and, and you identify where they are and if you can't go back to your current existing client base and ask them just send them send them a simple survey and ask them where they are and then focus on one and, and work on that one I think I think um, um, there are some people who are very much orientated to one particular area. So if you're, um, the industry that you have targeted is um, very visual, like retail, like dressing, like shops, they're going to be sitting on Instagram because that's where they're actually posting. Um, and it's, it's understanding uh, where, where that is. Um, yeah. I think, I think that's a great point. Um, yeah, always, always ask. So, someone will know where they are. It's just a matter of um, finding finding that person or people who can who can help help you. Um, also, another way to help you get found online is to use hashtags. And um, you may have heard about these before, um, but it's basically you use the hash tag on your on your um, keyboard, and then a short piece of uh, short piece of text afterwards. So it could be your business name, or it could be something to do with 
uh, the industry or topic that you're talking about. And the purpose of hashtags is to make your, your social media posts searchable. So if you do a really fantastic post, um, say on um, changes to GST or BAS, and you don't tag it appropriately, um, then when someone searches on, on those social channels for people who have who've, um, posted about that, unfortunately your post won't come up or is less likely to come up. Um, so th think of them as a, as a simple way to associate your posts with specific areas that are, are relevant to you. And you can see a really fast, fantastic example here of, of a company that I think that's doing it really well. And you can see they actually use quite a few hashtags um, at the bottom of their, of their, uh, of their post. And Heather, I know you use them quite a lot as well, don't you? Yeah, I absolutely do. Um, typically not as many as um, Experion have done, um, but yes, I will use them. And some of the sites are actually uh, recommending them. So for example, LinkedIn um, actually comes up as you're writing the post and suggests uh, what the particular hashtags should be. Um, and, and you can actually get hashtag generators out there that will suggest uh, what you should go with. Yeah. But um, for instance, in Facebook, you really need to have a hashtag if you want it to be searchable for, for whatever reason. They, that's the, one of the only ways you can find things in, in Facebook, if mm. you need your hashtag. And quite a good idea um, if you're sort of getting started is to sort of think about all the relevant hashtags that might be useful and um, and you might find these because as, as Heather said they might be uh, suggested by the platform or you might see other people using them um, who, are, who are posting about uh, topics that you're interested in and I would actually put them into a, um, a word doc or something so that you know you've got a list of the ones and you can sort of pick and choose and then over time you'll sort of know off by heart what they are but just in those early days quite good to sort of have a bit of a, a cheat sheet um, so you can use them. And yep. um, a question from Anita Core, which is, I've had people tell me not to put hashtags in the original post, but in the comments to encourage engagement. Um, look, I've heard variations of that as well, especially for um, Instagram. Um, I sort of haven't seen specific sort of evidence either way. Have you sort of got a feeling, Heather? I agree, Anita, that Insta, um, they do suggest putting it in the, the second part of the post. Instagram's weird because you are only allowed to put so much text into the original post. So put the main thing in the original post and then post in the comment, the following comment, the hashtags to try and get the trend happening there. Um, and likewise, and another weird one on LinkedIn, um, um, don't necessarily put a hyperlink in the main comment. So don't put a URL um, in the main comment. You put that in the comments. So it's uh, one of these funny things. But the thing is, Anita, to be aware of is that many of these things run on algorithms and the algorithms change. So um, as someone who sort of monitors what's happening, one day it's working really well and yeah, yeah, you're doing really well on things and then something changes um, and, and that's about maybe sort of uh, referring to your marketing experts, say what, what's happened here, why is it not performing as well? And it may be, um, oh, now you have to put the hashtags there or now you have not to put the hashtags, now you have to put the URL or maybe even emojis start <laughs> performing badly or something like that. Um, and, and a lot of what I do, I do organically and see the performance and how it works. And for instance, putting videos out there can do really well um, and putting stunning in images, you know, like this is kind of a weird, but, but still visually stunning and captivating image from Experian. Hmm. Um, and then a, a good question from Jamie, who said, how often should you post to various social media platforms? And we did touch on that a little bit before with Twitter, which is basically you can people can be very very active on Twitter, and you know if you see very active people on there, it's not out of the realms of possibility that they may tweet 10, 15, 20 times a day. Um, you know, but if you say look at a at a LinkedIn, it might be um, once a week. Um, you know, and then sort of Facebook and and uh, and Instagram sort of fall maybe in the sort of you know you could do a couple of posts every every couple of days. It, it sort of really depends um, what you're looking to achieve from each channel and, and sort of what your users expect. Um, but I, but personally, I would sort of say post most to someone like Twitter and then least to, to, to LinkedIn um, because the types of 
content that you're posting are quite different. To LinkedIn, um, you'd be posting something, maybe it's you know sort of a video that you've worked on or it's some um, a blog post that you've put out. You know, Twitter, for example, it could be, you know, I saw this in, in, in the, um, I heard this on the radio, I saw this sort of in, in the news tonight, and these are my thoughts on it sort of off the cuff, you know, so it's a very different way of, of engaging with the platforms. Yeah, and, and, it, and you'll find at different times of the day, um, different people come in and, and comment on things. So LinkedIn, I actually put up at least two or three posts a day but completely different audiences will come in and, and uh, monitor them or jump on them or comment them comment on them. What was interesting was in May last year, I um, went to the US for three weeks and I was posting naturally while I was there. Maybe the images were stunning because of the, the I, I'm in, you know, in America. Um, my followings went up massively. However, <laughs> they're not necessarily going to be my client base. However, um, what it was, was because I was trending with US people. US people were seeing it. I was in the US time zone and they were seeing it then. So um, that's kind of interesting, but do it in the time zone and, and, and when your people will be uh, reading it, taking a rest or drinking a cup of tea or checking their socials. Mm. So, and we sort of, as he has sort of touched on in terms of, things to share and, and one of the poll questions was what do you post to social and um, photos was uh, the, the sort of the winner I mean 63% always posting photos um, but then after that it was really followed by educational content blogs commentary and insights and um, and I suppose the thing is on social media you guys are the experts in, in a, I suppose a, a, an industry that a lot of people aren't <coughs> so don't um, don't undervalue the expertise and the knowledge that you guys have that a lot of people it is um it is something that they feel very um under informed about so you know whether it's reminding clients or news um promoting um your clients and what they're up to um there's just there's a whole raft of things that you can share and heather sent me this um post from aegis business services which i think just hits the nail on the head in, in so many ways it's topical because we all know with um, the paper, toilet paper shortages uh, with the coronavirus, um, it's sort of educational. You do um, how to cap, uh, sort of to do things and also highlights their expertise and it's humorous. So it sort of really nails all the things um, that you could possibly want in a, in a social post. Um, but this would have come out of just what they, they would have seen something on the news saying that there's a shortage and thought, okay, well, how can we, how can we sort of post about that in a way which is relevant to kind of what we do. So I think, you know, it's such a nice example of using um, social media a bit creatively, you know, above and beyond just the sort of, you know, posting out a blog or sort of a, a picture sort of of you in an event, which are all really valid uses of it. Um, but this sort of just shows, you know, if you can put a little bit more um, thought into it, there's, you know, there's a lot that can be achieved. Yeah, and I'm sure that kind of came up around the water cooler, that one that they had some fun with. So it's a great one. Mm. And a question from Paula, which is how, how do we handle trolls or bad feedback on social? Um, and Heather, I'll, I'll let you go first here because I think you're, you're much more active than I am. <laughs> hey, Paula, thank you for your question. It's a really relevant and, and valid question. So I've had some terrible trolls on um, social media. So if we talk about a troll, which is different to someone leaving you bad feedback. So if we talk about a troll who perhaps... Um, for whatever reason, maybe they're a little bit unstable or deranged, is coming after you on social media. Every channel has an option um, to block them. So you may block them and, and make them quiet for like 30 days, but every channel does have the op option to block them. And I would contemplate that might be a path that you need to go down um, so that they can't come after you on those particular channels. Now, if we talk about someone who has given you bad feedback on social media, it's an opportunity potentially, and this probably comes into customer service experience, it's an opportunity to potentially um, uh, talk to them, communicate with them, work out what happened, improve, improve the, the particular situation, if that's all possible. If you feel it's unreasonable, 
um, I would still reply to them professionally. Mm -hmm. If it's um, reasonable, um, then maybe, you know, maybe you can turn that bad experience into an amazing experience, hopefully. I'm not, um, um, we've all seen people how um, they turn up at a, a restaurant and they, they complain about one tiny thing and expect the whole thing for free. You know, I'm not into that type of, that. that's bad form. Um, but if it's reasonable, let's see what we can do here. I'm not talking about giving them away free stuff or anything like that. Let's just, where, where did we let them down and how can we improve from that and how can we learn from that? So hopefully that has um, assisted you. But yeah, very much the trolls, it's, it can be a real issue. And, um, um, and I do encourage every platform has a blocking option. Mm. I think just one, one thing I would add to the bad feedback side of things is, you know, always um, you may or may not be able to fix it, but how you handle that situation uh, is really important um, because people talk and they may tell their friends, look, it wasn't what I was looking for, but they were super helpful and tried to help me resolve it. Or if it, or if you sort of talk with them over the social channel, people will see that and they'll see that you did your very best mm -hmm. to help them. And I think that's what people are looking for is, you know, the days of sort of businesses just being able to ignore customers who weren't happy are long gone. Um, and so use it as an opportunity to, as, as Heather said, um, prove that you're listening and you're responsive and you'll do whatever you can within reason to resolve it. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I have eaten at my um, favorite cafe every couple of weeks for the last five years and they'll get bad feedback because people will say things like they allowed dogs in the outside area, which for me is the best thing about the cafe is that they allow dogs in the outside area. So people will complain about things that irk them, but doesn't necessarily mean there's anything bad happening then. Mm. Um, and now this slide is all about um, making it clear what, if you have a post, what you want users or viewers to do. So don't always expect that just because you've put up a link to an event or a link to a blog post or something like that, don't expect that they are going to, in their busy days with sort of lots of posts in front of them, know what it is that you want them to do. So be very clear. And, and I'm, I'm serious, sort of like in plain English, as, um, as Kinder Pocock have done, they want you to follow them on Insta. Um, they want you to sort of get down to the chat revolution tomorrow. Hey, uh, they've been clear about what it is um, that they're asking you to do. And, and I just can't emphasize that enough. Don't think that people just magically understand what you want them to do. You've got to tell them. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And and this is great because she's she's telling you to follow her on Insta as well. Because I think this was a tweet and she's like, follow me on Insta and, and register for uh, the event that I'm running as well. Mm. A really nice example. Um, and one of the questions we had earlier in terms of when to post, and we have sort of touched on this, but just to recap, um, it really depends on what channel you're on um, and, and who your audience is. So I suppose the main things, you know, we'd say here is, um, you know, once you know your audience and, and the channel and when they like to engage or when they're most likely to engage, um, you'll have a bit of a, of a feeling as to when is a, is a better time than, say, a worse time to mm -hmm. um, engage. And there, might, there may even be certain sites, say like a LinkedIn, probably people are more likely to be checking it during the week while they're at work, unless they're looking for another job, <laughs> it might be on the weekend. But, you know, so if you're gonna post to LinkedIn, you know, think about when during the week might be realistic. You know, whereas something like Twitter, people um, are, you know, will look at that any time, especially in their downtime. So they might be commuting, they might be having a coffee or, or sort of having lunch and just, flicking through their phone and sort of seeing what's going on. So um, there's no sort of specific time that I know of. Um, Heather, what, what's your feelings? Because I know you... Um, so I think if everything that you've said there's valid. Um, in LinkedIn, you can write a post, which is small, but you can also write an article, which is longer. Now, when I originally will post an article, the um, traction or um, likes or the, the, the views of it are typically quite small. I don't know why the post will perform much higher than than an article. However, the article has a, a, a real longevity to it. So an article that I wrote four years ago on LinkedIn, I'll still get one like every week on. So so it has SEO properties to it. 
So when people search for that topic, they can find the article. And I think a lot of the other sites, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, if you search for something, you don't find it. But I think if you search for articles, um, you do come, if you search articles in LinkedIn, do, do come up. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but it depends on keeping it there, the timeliness and stuff. So I wouldn't at this stage overly stress about when to post, just, just get going and do some and, and see what can fit into the capacity that you've got. Um, mm. Um, and look, this is our, our last slide. Thanks for um, staying, staying with us, everyone. I realize we've gone a few minutes over time, um, but this is really, this is sort of the other massive benefit of social media is getting involved in the groups. And there are really, there's kind of as many groups on as many topics as you could possibly want. And, um, and just harking back to the soul, uh, sorry, the poll question, um, over half of you are already um, in groups or thinking about joining them. So that's that's great to see that you guys are using them so widely. And we've just got a, a, just a couple of examples here. Um, they're all sort of accounting and bookkeeping related, but I mean, there are so many groups out there and so many places for you to get value from um, and to sort of engage, whether it's with people in your industry to sort of share experiences and learnings, um, or maybe even sort of prospect and, and sort of build relationships with clients. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a friend who um, focuses and specializes in a very specific area. So this does become easier if you've identified the area that you're sort of focused on and who your ideal clients are. And I'm going to use an example. This is not the actual thing because I don't want to give her secret away, but let's say she focuses on Shopify because you'll all know that's an e-commerce platform. She, um, is a, she is a member of the Shopify user Facebook group. She is the only accountant in the Shopify user Facebook group that has thousands and thousands and thousands of users. Guess where all of her clients come from? That group. So a question goes up there about accounting and integrations. She responds to it. She consistently responds to it. And she's just known as the go-to person. And, and, and it's just immensely valuable, this group that someone else created, but she's the, the, the only accountant in that group. One of the key things I see accountants and bookkeepers doing wrong on social media is talking to other accountants and bookkeepers rather than, and, and, and having their messaging towards other accountants and bookkeepers rather than having their messaging towards their client base or their potential client base. Now, um, and sure, it's fun to have accountants and bookkeepers as colleagues and as support and that has a really important part here. Um, but if you're doing it to um, attract, retain, or, in, or, or, or bring on uh, more um, clients, then, then you need to be clear on the messaging there. And, and, and to say that as well, and I think we have slightly touched on it, um, many people, I think, many of the successful accountants, the, the, the small to medium accountants, are actually using social media to brand themselves to attract the best of the best talents to their small firms mm. and away from the big four. Um, mm. And you see a lot of uh, uh, job um, attraction happening that way. Mm. And look, just one last question, Andrew, thanks so much. You've been very patient, but I thought I'd just leave this question for last. And it was, do you have any examples of people or businesses we can follow who are using the different platforms? Well, um, and I would say, look, everyone that we've mentioned on this webinar so far does it really well. Obviously, Heather does it brilliantly. Um, and, and there may even be some examples of people uh, not in the industry. I mean, if, if I think of um, you know, Nike or Apple or sort of, sort of some of those big brands, I mean, they all have things that you can learn from as well. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be industry specific. You know, do look at how um, other, other, other businesses and other areas are using it as well, because um, it may also just give you um, a point of difference to, you know, rather than necessarily doing what everyone's doing, you can sort of take learnings from other industries and, and use them yourself. Um, Heather, who, who do you think is, um, again, other than the ones we use today, who do you think is doing a really good job? Um, well, I would highlight everyone we're doing to use today has, is across all platforms. So that's worth um, um, looking at. Um, and, and, um, 
the people what okay so this is one of the ways when i go to a new city what i do is actually search for a hashtag so if for example i'm going to um uh melbourne i'll search for hashtag melbourne accountant and have a look for people who are there using that hashtag and then see the ones that um appeal to me that engage me that make me want to read a bit further um and 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 find out people that way so actually go to another area, not necessarily your competitor down the door um, and see how they're doing. But I, I know that we have uh, included a lot of great um, accountants and bookkeepers in the webinar. So hopefully go and search them and, and uh, follow what they're doing in their particular areas. Mm. Well, brilliant. Thanks so much um, for your time, Heather. Um, I, think, I think I definitely learned a lot and I hope everyone on the webinar has learned a lot. Um, you can always find out more about um, social media or any other webinars on um, bowmanmarketing.com. We've got a whole webinar section where we record and share all our webinars. Um, so again, thanks for everyone for attending. And Heather, thanks again so much for your time today. Really appreciated it. Thank you everyone for having me on. And thank you, Charles, for inviting me. Um, really enjoyed it. Great. Thanks everyone.